is your browser and an internet connection. <clears throat> and it always starts up uh, with Long Sutton, just because that's where we're centered and the account knows about that. But oh. it is actually a digital map of the entire United Kingdom. So we can go everywhere. Oh, wow. on this. <laughs> Um, and okay. if you've used Google Maps or anything like that, this is going to be very, very familiar. Yeah. Okay. Is that something you've done? Yeah, I spend quite a lot of time on OS Maps as well. So. Uh, oh, OK. So you're very familiar with this. Very familiar. So the right hand side is the digital mapping system from the OS and it's their high definition one. So we can go down to the most amazing yeah. detail. And then on the left hand side is a column that changes depending on what you're doing. But at the moment, it's showing you the collection of layers of data that you can overset on top of the Ordnance Survey map. So the only layer that's on at the moment is the parish boundary. Okay. And you turn layers on and off by simply clicking in them. So if I click that, you'll see the boundaries disappear. Okay. Um, and there's, there's literally hundreds of layers of data here. So it'll, it's quite a rabbit hole to go down. You might find you never come out <laughs> again because there's really fascinating stuff. Um, and the vast majority of it is supplied by third parties. So we can do nothing with it except use it. Uh, okay. But there is the opportunity to create our own layers, uh, which we do, and we can then do whatever we like with that. And we're going to be spending a bit of time doing that today. So just to show you the principles of how this works. So you're familiar that this all here is the levels of Somerset, yes. which is therefore very prone to flooding. And although I know where the flood uh, layers are, just to show you up here, there is a search layer of the magnifying glass. And if I type in flood, it'll select the collections of layers that have the word flood involved. And if okay. you go down to the Environment Agency collection and open it up, we get all of their layers. And then if we say, so what happens if we in a zone three uh, flood? Uh, and it's sort of, you can see how the water pops up. Yeah, we're in a lot of trouble by the looks of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> well, you haven't been here long enough, I don't suppose, but this does happen on a regular, or every winter, in fact. Sure. So um, all of this lot disappears underwater. And from the uh, point of view of the parish council, this is a fabulous aid for planning applications mm -hmm. where you can see whether people are going to build a house where they're going to disappear underwater for three months yeah, over the year. But there is a lot of it. I always think um, how very clever, because before this lot existed, they still went ahead and built Yeovilton Airfield and it doesn't disappear underwater. So they knew what they were doing 50, 60 years ago. <laughs> So there's any number of things that you can uh, turn on or off here, uh, uh, Colin. So um, we're just going to go through the basic principles now. So the first thing I'd like to do is to create an account for you, which is up here in administration. And by the way, I'll have to formally put this to the parish council meeting on um, Wednesday. Sure. to get their authorization because anybody who is a councillor is automatically entitled to an account right but non-council people have to be approved by the council just to meet oh, the okay. ordinance surveys um, licensing rules yeah so okay. i'll create an account for you now but we'll have to go through the process of actually formally sure. um, inducing you or inducting you whatever the phrase is um so i'm going to add you and what would you like to be known as? Just Colin? Just Colin. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. And your People first have used other phrases in the past, but they're probably not appropriate. So <laughs> <laughs> it's ledger, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. And the department is going to be footpath sub committee. I will, if you like, I would like to ask if they would in, um, in bring you on to the subcommittee, if that's all right with you. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. You will, you become, So you're Colin, is it underscore ledger? Underscore ledger, yeah. Uh, Yahoo, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yahoo.co.uk. Yeah. <laughs> The, um, 
part of the exercise of, of getting older is to um, teach your memory to be as flexible as possible. And so to do that, I have a Linux computer on the left-hand side of me and a, a Mac on the right. And the, oh, the, okay. the mental <laughs> challenge is that Steve Jobs was left-handed and Bill Gates was right-handed. So <laughs> you'll notice that everything on the Mac and the PC is diametrically opposite. <laughs> you want to open a new tab on a Mac um, or you want to close one, you click on the left, but always everything on the, the windows is on the right. And so it goes through for everything. So I, I sort of, and the keyboards are different. So I hesitate at times to make sure that I'm doing <laughs> the right thing. Now you're going to get an email, Colin, which will ask you to reset your password so that your account um, is then um, available oh, to yeah. you. That's arrived already. Yeah, I'll do that a bit later on. Shall I just uh, once we finish this? Well, yes, I'm wondering whether it wouldn't make more sense so for now, to just... do the driving from now on. Yeah, because okay, you learn the, the more quickly that way. Yeah, fine. So, that we'll do? Just... so if you can go ahead and create your password and then log in um, and the address to log in, I will put for you in the chat. Um, maybe let's just come out of here and we're done with this. So my username would just be Colin, I guess, would it? Correct. And then it should fill in for you the at 40UD069. And uh, I'm just going to give you a... Uh, no, it didn't, stop it, it, it didn't do that, actually. Um, didn't okay. Uh, so let me just type in here the address, and they probably give. Uh, whoops! Wow, I've got the password saved because that was suggested to me helpfully. Yes, by, do they give you a URL to log into? Uh, I only got a yes. I'm on the login page now. Okay, you are. Well, if you share your screen with me in Zoom, uh, then I'll be able to see what you're doing and walk you through it. Yeah, let me do that. Got to push the right buttons in Zoom. It's the big green one down the bottom of the screen. So move your mouse around. You'll see a big green button called Share. Are you you're on a PC? I take it. Yes, I am on a, yep. on that. Right. So let me just share that. There we go. Yeah, that's um, good. All perfect. right. So you need Colin and then your at sign. Yeah. And forty four zero. U D lowercase. 069. Okay, so there you go. And then okay, fine, and I'll I'll save that. Yeah. And so now it's logging you in. Ah, oh, marvelous. And then you're on the system. Right. So just to practice, would you my... like to turn off the parish boundaries, which means going down to the boundaries administrative layer and clicking on it. So yeah, click in the doubt. There you go. Click on that one. No, no, not on the cog itself, anywhere in the boundary. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Okay. And your own basic boundary stays in place, but everybody else's turns off. Okay. Okay. And now then just the, if just you've got a mouse with a wheel on it, you can just zoom in. Right. Oh, yeah, I've got you. Um, now, is that is that the boundary that's of interest to 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 the parish council? Well, that is the parish boundary, yes. Oh, right. Okay. Fine. So it's of huge interest to the parish council. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I didn't want to do is start exploring, sort of, you know, mapping lots of styles and things out. So I. I oh, yeah, I that's know. fine. That's no problem at all. You can go anywhere you like. Okay. So if you happen to have a, a grandmother living in Yorkshire or something, you can just yeah. uh, go to Yorkshire without any issues. Oh, okay. Fine. Um, so, yes, you can see your house if you zoom in a bit further and a bit more. The more detail, you, the more you scroll in, the more information you get. Gosh, that is detailed, isn't it? Yes. Wow. And you haven't finished yet. You've still got a long way to go. Oh, my goodness. 
Yeah, I think so, you can see the plum tree that I planted in the back yeah. of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's also fun, Colin. So why don't you leave this, this, the uh, screen as it is at the moment, go over to the columns on the left-hand side, shut down the boundaries administrative, just click on the little up arrow. Yep. And, move, and scroll upwards all the way up until you get to the aerial data sets. Click on that one and click on the 20... 12.5 centimeter and that will automatically bring in the photography for this part of the map and it will scale it to the map so you'll now see superimposed on top of the map the aerial photography for null um, and it takes a while because it's got a lot of data to bring down this is all coming down from the cloud but it'll be worth it when you get there if you, also in the meantime, if you go up to the three three bars oh, above where it says Ordnance Survey PSGA, yeah, okay. click on there and click on the right, the little uh, cogwheel. This one? Yeah. Okay, that, what you have there is a transparency slider. So if you slide it all the way to the left, you turn the map off and the 100% photography. Ah, okay. And then if you go all the way to the right, you get a 100% map and no photography at all. Sure. So you can judge either halfway through along, you know, anywhere that suits you, depending on what you're doing. But for, for, for now, it's fun to go to 100% photography. So you can go all the way left. Or you can simply click on that layer and just turn it off and you're left with just the photo class. But you can see that you can now zoom in on that plum tree you were talking about. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> actually, it's obviously neat. Uh, they up needs an update because there's quite a lot of things we've done in the garden. They're not. Oh right, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, yes. I'm afraid I can't control how often they fell. I no, own indeed. your house, yeah. <laughs> but um, yes, same. and it, it seems yeah. to be a little fuzzy at the moment. But as time goes by, it gets crisper and crisper as all the pixels pour in. Yeah. So it, you get a nice sharp. There you go. It's much much sharper now. Amazing. Um, so this is becomes particularly helpful when tracking footpaths. Yes, it is. A you, good can thing actually, because, um, you can actually see them. Obviously, cross country. So, uh... well, if you go up a little bit um, up that road, so scroll down a bit. Yeah, it takes a long time with the photography. Sorry. <clears throat> Perhaps that wasn't such a good idea, but then you've got that. Well, on that on that corner is where you've got the first of the footpaths coming in from the left. Uh, I think it's a little bit further up this road. Uh, uh, is it okay? Well, you know better than I. It's your area. Yeah, this one. Oh, yes, it's that one. Okay, that's right. Yeah. So that's Dean Ruddle's path off to the right. Is Lake. Uh, and in yes, fact, that's right. Yeah, yes. and He's it doesn't even show the lake, does it? So it's a, it is a long way out of date. Unless you go... I think it's just waiting to... My my internet, the internet connection in Noel is not very good at the moment, I'm sure. Uh... Well, I know we're waiting for that gigabyte to come in, but yes. it seems to be taking open reach a heck of a long time to get. Yes, yeah. I know they're teasing us with it, aren't they now? But Yes, uh... absolutely. <laughs> anyway... You've got the principle of how this works. Yeah. So to speed yeah. things up, it's, it's probably worth turning off the photography. Okay. So just, uh, you know, anywhere in the layer except on the cog. Here we go. Yep. Right. That's it. And then uh, sometimes the map forgets that it's meant to be on. It's sort of busy circling around at the time. If it doesn't come back, you just get a white screen. Just click on the refresh circle up at the top left, all the way to the top. Up, 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 up into your browser refresh circle. Oh, the actual. Um, yeah, uh, just just restart browser. the whole thing. There you go. Yeah, I've got you. Yeah. Then it sort of, it restarts and then it knows where it's starting from. Because sure. it does get a little bit confused when you turn the photography on and off. Yeah, there we go. We're back now. Okay, good. So, um, you can turn on and off any of the layers that you like, but the ones that we create ourselves are all listed under the parish layer connection, which is the top brown one. 
So if you open up that, All right, okay. then I've got a bunch of test layers. The ones you really want are, are down footpaths actual and footpaths features, a bit further right. down. And not that oh, one. Here, there you go, there. yes. Got you. So the features are the ones where we're adding the uh, styles and the gates and the photographs and everything because they're the footpaths uh, features. Okay. You, can, you can turn that on. And it pops all the ones that we've done so far. And we've color coded them so that the red ones are the ones that need urgent attention. Right. And the green ones are hopefully in reasonable shape. And then the, the brown and the blue are sort of different degrees of priority. And what we're actually doing is um, some of the ones to the more to the left of the, the village are um, having gates put in at the moment. So that's where we are. We've got, I think, three gates going in. Um, cool. So the information that we get from here, um, if you go down to uh, close up the parish layers, just click on the button uh, at the top of there. Yeah. So that it, it closes. There we go. And if you go down a little bit further, you'll see from SSD, not to, uh, where are we? Somerset County Council, about five or six layers down. There you go. Ah, this one, yeah. yeah. So if you open that one up, and then public rights of way is their version of our footpaths. So if you turn that on, and you probably need to zoom in a little. I'll, I'll center it so, on now. You see, I'm quite so the, the, they're in purple now, and right. they what they do is they add an ID number to every path. So these are the paths that they know about, which are not necessarily the ones that we know about. Okay. So, but they're very useful for putting in paths. So for instance, they think that path goes straight through the middle of the lake. Now, you and I happen to know that it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you want to swim. <laughs> yes, yeah, so because it's not our data, we can't change it. All we can do is tell them where they're wrong. And I'm trying to work on them to let them say, this is, can be a two-way data flow. You know, If you let us make changes here, it'll reflect up at your level and get your, your out-of-date information up to date. Mm. But there's a, that's a long, hard path that we're chasing at the moment. <laughs> so what we've done is we've used the uh, Somerset County Council's data of the footpaths, and then I've added in the styles and their, their condition as we get to them. So if you, the, the way that this thing works is if you click on anything, the left-hand column will change to the data record for it. So just click on that. Nothing happens. There we go. And then I click on the public rights way. No, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. No, uh, mistake on my part. Close that back up and go to the footpath features. That's the one we're working on. And so now you can see that where that is, um, what the ID number is, and in particular, of useful uh, to us is if you scroll down a bit. So there's a little slider bar there to the right of the column, a dark slider, yes. Now you can see, if you click on the attachment, uh, yep, just click on the green cloud. Oh, okay. And then this is where the photographs show up. So when oh, you send me okay. photographs, of the bits that you've been to, they show up here. Right. So you'll recognize that. Well, I I'm did. sure. Yes, on the way up to Knoll Hill. Yes, that's right. Um, from inside Knoll. Um, but what we're doing or what I'd like to see happening is the public sending us more and more of these photographs so that we can get an up-to-date picture of not only the, the standard now, but uh, over a passage of time so that people can see the improvements that we make. So yes, this one... I have actually seen, uh, well, I was going to say one or two, but what, one style recently down at um, Plot Farm was actually missing 
but when I went through there a few days ago, they, there's actually a nice new plank <laughs> that goes through the with a stick to hold on to as you go over the top. Well, wonderful. So if you were to take a photograph of that, that would be very good to um, update the records. And you must have a smartphone with you. Yes, I have. Yeah. So here's the really neat stuff, Colin. It's one of the things I really like about Parish Online. Have you got your phone with you at the moment? I have, yes, yeah. Well, why don't you turn on the browser and browse to uh, parishonline.xmap.cloud. The point being that you can then bring Parish Online up on your phone. Ah. And if you then go to this new style of yours, um, you can turn on what's called geolocation inside Parish Online, and it will follow you around. And when you stand in front of the, the, the style and you take a photograph of it, you can upload the photograph straight into Parish Online on that particular gate or style. Yeah, yeah I've got okay. it on my, on my phone there. Perfect. So... Uh... Yeah, I would just log in here and um, so you can literally take the photo while you're there. Yes, there's a feature called um, geolocation. So on your main screen on the on the computer, just for instance, if you go down to the bottom corner uh, where there's three vertical dots by your name. Oh, down here. Yeah, yeah. if you click on that. It should come up and offer you geolocation. You can turn that on. It won't do much on your PC, but if you do the same thing on your smartphone, then it turns on the GPS tracking and it will move Parish Online along as you walk. No, so as you walk along, okay. it'll tell you where. It's very much like Google Maps, but it's yeah. using Parish Online data so that if you turn on this layer, you'll be able to take a photograph of something and immediately add it to the layer, which is really Brilliant. useful from my point of view, because you've now increased our knowledge without my having to do a thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also without too much effort on my part as well, it would seem so. Um, exactly. Yeah. So the, the one... Um, requirement is that the item the feature already exists in parish online before you get to it otherwise it has no idea what to attach the photograph to right but uh since most of the stuff that we've got is already listed here so um and, and then i would you, just um sorry Graham, I, I would just give it a, a sort of a sensible title and some sort of um Status. Well, the way this works is if you go up to the top of that column, there's a pencil on the top left. Oh, yes. And that enables you to edit it. So if you think I've got something wrong, you can just change it now. Right. So, um, and... Yeah, I understand. And then the way this works further is that if we now um, go up to the top, row of the parish online menu you've got something called table table so if you select from there the layer and you and, and select the layer footpath feature so if you just type in f-o-o-t it'll take you straight to it there you go so go down to footpath features turn that on and then you've got all the entries there that we've made and it's much easier to edit from here so if you want to edit any of these fields, you just click on the field and go ahead and type in what you want. Ah, OK, fine. Oh, that's really good. Isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very yeah. neat. And then even neater, let's say you take that top row, that top item, or even the one you it doesn't matter, which, whichever one you like. One, yeah. Yes, if you now go down to the bottom right and click on view on map, it takes you straight to that feature. Oh, brilliant. Okay. So I think it's really sweet. Yes. And finally, as one last thing, if you now go up to those three vertical dots on the top of the left column, you can do a data extract. And if you click on that, then you can um, 
specifically export the data for that record or whatever record you're on and send them out. It's the same as the table view, but it's just doing it um, from within the map, that's all. Right. Um, and then you can, um, if you click on the run down the bottom, it'll just give you some records. Uh, under footpaths, actual, I don't think there are any records. You oh. need to be on footpaths features. Uh, not 101, the, a bit further, further, one more down. Not, is there not an O? Oh, ha! Footpaths actual. Yeah, I don't think there isn't much data in footpaths actual. It's a bit. If you filter on an ID, then you need to put an ID number in to filter on, which is oh, I see. Right. So L21 is a good, you know. Is, is one, but I think footpaths actual is not a good layer to be in because I've only done about two of those. Um, I'm a bit surprised not to give you footpath features. No, that's uh, there's footpath features 101. 101, but I think that's the training class I do. I don't think yeah. anything in there. 101 is like training, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, yes. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm slightly, oh, maybe because we're in a data extract rather than the table view. So if you kill the data extract, because it's tied to the particular record we went into, there's an X, yeah, and now you can just click on that. If you now go up to table view, you go back to that much more detailed thing. There you go. Oh, here we go, right. And then you can, there's an interest there to see how the filter works. If you go up to the column field at the top, and just say uh, you want the name. The uh, footpath ID is easier. Just go down to footpath ID. Yeah. And then contains the value on the right. You can say L space 21. And now it's limited you to just those records which are uh, in, involved footpath L21. Oh, yes. So now you can yeah. see where it inter interacts with all the others. Oh, look, there's one from me. <laughs> yeah, and if you look, it's, it says urgent me. And these, <laughs> oh, look just, at that. Yeah, the yeah. step has collapsed. So yeah. it's all there. It's just that we need people to actually now do something about it. Yes. If you click on view on map down the bottom right, it'll take you to your particular one. And then if you click on whichever one it was, it'll be marked in red. So it's the bottom right corner. Yeah, it must be this one, mustn't it? Click on that, you'll get the actual photograph that you took. Go into footpath features and scroll down to the to the attachments. Yep, and you can see your pictures there. Yes, that's right. I uh, I haven't been there for a while, but I do remember this. Yes, click on the green cloud. There you go. Yes, very tragic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the system does work. Yeah, uh, but, brilliant. Okay. And uh, if that issue, of course, has resolved itself in winter, there are no brambles there now. <laughs> no, yeah, in winter it's absolutely fine. Um, but uh, uh, but yeah. so uh, I think that's the runaround that uh, I hoped you would enjoy. Yeah, really useful. I think probably the best thing to do now is to let you play with it. Yes. And see if there are any questions that occur to you. Um, and you can come back to me in an email or a phone call or something and see what you want. Um, sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, it seems reasonably straightforward, uh, Graham. Um, I think it is. It's so, certainly different. in terms of sort of, in, yeah. This sort of interactive map is, is very familiar, isn't it? Um, because yes. um, we see it in all sorts of applications nowadays. So um, that's that's absolutely so fine. If, if you come across a footpath that has got a style that we haven't mentioned, all right, then you, you create that by what's known as adding a feature. So if you close that left-hand column with the X at the top and you go into the uh, parish layers, um, oh yeah. yeah, that's that's this one that's already open, isn't it? No, yes, that uh, one. Oh, sorry, parish layers. There we go. I go down to footpath features. Say footpath features. Yeah. Now, if you right click there, you've got add feature. Ah, okay. 
And what that does, it brings you up a blank record. So you can now fill in everything on the left hand side. And in particular, it won't let you close the record until you have put in your a name and the name, the best name to get or the ID to get is from Rome, Somerset. Yes, so, I, um, I have but, actually seen their website um, because they, they use all these L numbers, don't they? Yes, they do. But they also give a, an ID number to every style and every bridge right. and every every feature, which is to, you know, to avoid yeah. um, duplication, we use their same numbering system. So if you to right. open a new, um, yes, exactly, and just type in Rome Somerset or Explore Somerset, they're both yeah, I've been here already. Do that. Yeah, that's why it's popped up. Okay, so then what I do is I take their naming statistics for the particular style that we're doing and we transfer it into Parish Online. If you go, go back to Parish Online, you'll notice that your mouse is a crosshairs and it's waiting for you to say, so where is this new thing? And right. when you click on it, it'll dock it into position. And then if you haven't got the right position, you can edit it later and just move it around. I see. So once you've filled in the red box and you've put the item on the map, then the save button at the bottom will open up. But it won't let you save anything until A, you've given it um, a required name, and B, you've given it a position on the map. Right. Okay. Two, two steps. Okay. So, so, so sorry, Graham. Just, just to be clear, the, the name there is the ID. Well, no, there is a footpath ID box, bit, about three boxes. Four oh, yes. Boxes so, so, no, sorry. Yeah. So that's right. the name. Yes. The name is really how people describe it, you know, bottom of Knoll Hill or something useful. Oh, like that. I understand. Just right. give you a general description. Fine. Okay. Um, and then the only reason I, I kept a photo number was because when people send me things, they send me a list and they say, this is photo one, this is photo two, and photo three, yeah. and so forth. So I just to help to try and identify it. But it's, it's not a, a requisite thing. Sure. Okay. And, and, then, and then all of this is sort of reviewed, is it by the parish council on occasion to... Yeah, well, it's, it's a, the footpath committee is a, a, a permanent item on the agenda. Oh, and okay. the, I don't know, do you, have you come across Jill Murphy yet? No. Okay, so I mean, the way you might come across her is her husband is a dentist in Langport. Oh, okay. If you, if you, happen, if you happen to go to Langport for your dentistry, that's, his, that's her husband. Um, and she is the head of the footpath committee and there are about four or five of us on it. So other names, you've seen Nigel R Russell's name as one of the photographers. And there's Rich Fell, who's also the guy on the parish council who runs the lengthsman. Right, okay. So he gets out and about and sort of knows, in fact, most people know the country surrounding us pretty well. I think everybody on the parish council is pretty familiar. And um, so over on your left, you've got Bynum City Farm and Bynum City, sorry, on the right. Um, to your right there, you've got Bynum City Farm, uh, Bynum City Cottage. Uh, now. So yeah. that farm is run by... Um, Rose, no, uh, Ruby Coombs and her husband. Oh, so okay. they're your sort of reasonably close neighbours, but she's also on the parish council and she, of course, knows all the land know about and she also really helpfully knows who all the owners are of the land. Oh, that is useful. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> we, we do have the right people, I think, on the parish council. And uh, if you like, I yes, would absolutely. like very much, I'd like to suggest to Jill tomorrow night that you... Um, become a member of the footpath subcommittee okay. and, and yeah. get involved if that's all right yes. with you I, i'll be i'll be delighted graham yes yes okay yeah um, i think my my perhaps my first job is to um as you say to just have a, a, a little bit of a play around with this and in fact what i might do is go out and take a a, a few photos um even better, you know, yes. Well, try so, try out that geolocation thing on your phone because it's lots of fun. Well, yes, yeah. That's that's uh, that's a big time saver because sometimes you you've got to come back and sort of pinpoint where you you got to remember when you come back with thirty photos on your phone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, where, where they were heard. So that 
that is that is super useful. Um, so one one final thing, Colin, which is going to be super useful to you in the top right column or uh, top right hand side of the screen is a cogwheel. Oh yes. If you click on that and select help and support, that takes you to the knowledge base. And if you type in, let's just say for argument's sake, in the search box up there, type in geolocation. So click on that, yeah. And there's a really, really sweet little video there that you can watch that shows you exactly how to do it on Brilliant. your phone. And then there's a step-by-step sort of -step instructions underneath on how to do it. I just thought you might find that fun, particularly if you're gonna go out with your phone now. Yes. Um, so okay. watch the video first. It's good fun. But that, yeah. the knowledge base is pretty good. They're in the middle of rewriting it. Um, but the rewriting is being done by someone who's, who's very talented. I, I do like their, um, their notes. So everything you need to know is under, is under knowledge base, the top right hand side. Yeah, brilliant. That's really useful. Yeah, I'll go through this first, actually, I think. just so Okay, I... well, what you can do is if you go to the um, the home page for the community for there, just click on knowledge base at the top. Yeah, just go to the home page. What you can do now is store that as a favorite, as a bookmark, and you can come back to it without having to go through Parish Online. You, it's oh, just okay. a separate route. So if you just say that now as a favorite, um, you'd be in great shape. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Good. Wonderful. All right. Um, yeah, that's really useful, Graham. Thanks ever so much. Um, well, do by all means, um, do come along, uh, you know, call for help if you get stuck. But I, I suspect that you'll find yeah. that this is very, very intuitive. Okay. Um, and um, wide open suggestions. If you can see ways of improving things. Please don't hesitate to throw them at me. Okay. Yeah. But just on a sort of um, so for for example, if I um, just in terms of sort of etiquette and things, if if there's something that's been logged here, uh, for example, I know there are some styles around here that have actually degraded over time. So one or two of them that like last year I said were kind of were okay-ish, actually are are no longer okay. Um, but if someone else has already put some information on there, what do I just add to that or replace yes, it? Yes, just go in and edit it. And you're, there's lots of space to say, you know, comment by Colin. Um, okay. this, this is now deteriorated to a much yeah. worse step or whatever. So, yes, I mean, this is that I don't think you're treading on anyone's toes because, okay, frankly, fine. the more that people join in, the more that it gets done. So, right. if you go up to that pencil again to edit. Yeah. And then you can put in whatever you like. Okay. Um, but it's it's courteous to sort of just attribute to who it is that's yes. making the comment. So I'd just I'd probably if it was if if something had already been logged by someone else, I'd just go in and edit and I'd perhaps add some notes and a couple of photos, something per like that. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, great. And All right. The more the merrier. Yeah. yeah, okay. Good. Well, at least then at least there's a sort of um a bit of a trail as it were saying well you know a year ago someone photographed this and said it was fine. exactly uh, yes yeah you know, uh, a health and safety risk clearly so at least that might sort of you know it, it shows it shows that you know things are happening over time doesn't it as well yes great so uh, colin the meeting tomorrow night is in the uh, the village hall um I don't know if you'd like to come and introduce yourself or whether you'd rather like me to introduce the idea and get the village hall, the footpath committee to talk to you directly. Um, I'll, I'll let you do it, Graham. Okay. Gently, gently, then we'll go into it. All right. Um, I think I think probably you've got all you need to know from me now, Colin. So unless you have any other particular thing, I'll um, sign off and let you play. Yeah, and um, well, you're on holiday, aren't you? So yeah, enjoy enjoy the rest. Uh, of the no, 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 no. I'm working until um, tomorrow night. Oh, okay, fine, fine. So and then I'm heading off tomorrow night to the oh. Isle of Wight. We have a house oh. down there. Oh, lovely. Okay. So I'll <laughs> so I'll see you next week. Smashing. <laughs> All, All right. right. Yeah. It's good Thanks to talk so to you, Colin. Make care. Bye yeah. bye.
Take care, bye. Oh, by the way, um, I did record this meeting. So if you want to go back over anything, I can send you the video if you like. Cool. Okay. That's, Is that that's all right. Good. Okay. Yeah.